Hi, this is Professor J.M.A. Chan at California State University, Long Beach. In this video lesson today, we'll look at generalized arithmetic in context. One major superpower of mathematics is its ability to generalize. Let me give you an example for that. Suppose you run a merchandise store that sells t-shirt. You're curious about how much you should charge or price the t-shirt so that you can get the most revenue. Well, you start experimenting this and you want to be extra organized by keeping the information in a table. So every month, you're going to change the price of the t-shirt by $1. This is what we mean by context. You're doing the mathematics for a reason. And the reason is because you want to figure out what is the optimal price that you should price your t-shirt so then you can get the most money. Well, in the real world, you probably want to do this in a spreadsheet on a computer to keep everything organized and automatic. Well, this is where you want to pull everything you know about marketing, business, and, and all of that. So, so suppose that you remember learning about this concept of marginal analysis in the economics class. So then you want to reduce the price by $1 each time to see how that unit change affects revenue. When you're about to decide on the initial price of the t-shirt to charge, you went around and you looked at what is the average price of t-shirt nowadays, and you ended up charging $25 during the first month. And the entire month went by, you ended up selling 375 t-shirts. So the revenue you made from selling those 375 t-shirts, each charged at $25, is exactly 375 times 25. And you weren't happy with the outcome of the sales. You could choose to either increase the price of the t-shirt or decrease the price of t-shirt. But if every time you do that, you want to do it just by $1 because that actually tells us a lot about how things change. Suppose you want to decrease the price of the t-shirt by $1 thinking that you get more people to buy and maybe it would generate more revenue. So during the month two, you charged the t-shirt by $24 and you ended up selling 400 t-shirts in that entire month. And the revenue is 400 times 24, which is 9,600. Well, you like what you saw, and it seems like decreasing the price of the t-shirt generated more revenue. So you continue with that pattern of decreasing by another dollar during month three. And you ended up selling 25 more t-shirts than the previous month at 425. The revenue is even better this time at 9,775. Well, as a business owner, you would like to make the most money in the shortest amount of time. Right? So you don't really want to keep experimenting this forever until you hit that sweet spot. So first thing you notice is that this pattern actually makes sense because as you're decreasing the price of the t-shirt, you're getting more and more people buying the t-shirts. And the second thing you notice is that you only have about a thousand t-shirts on hand that you can sell. So suppose you were to give every single t-shirt away to anybody who walks by your store, you only have a thousand to give away. That means if the price of the t-shirt is zero dollars, then you should sell 1,000 of those. Well, in that case, and you're making zero dollar revenue. That might not be something you want to do, but that's a hypothetical situation that we need to know before we start modeling. Now, to answer this question about what is the sweet spot of how much I should charge per t-shirt in order to get the max revenue, you're asking the question is, what is this sweet spot here in this column of t-shirts that then corresponds to some number in a number of t-shirt sales that gives me the most revenue? Well, to do that, first thing you notice is that for every $1 increase in the price of t-shirt, you sell 25 fewer t-shirts. So in general, and this is where this term of generalized arithmetic comes in. In general, if you represent the price of the t-shirt by P dollars, then the number of t-shirts sold would be a function of P, right? Because for every dollar you increase, you're going to sell 25 fewer t-shirts. So the number of t-shirts sold is going to be represented by 1,000 minus 25p. And the 1,000 is because that's how many t-shirts you have total. And then for every dollar increase in p, you're going to sell 25 fewer. And the revenue is, remember, it's the number of t-shirts sold times the unit price per t-shirt. So it's going to be 1,000 minus 25p times p. And being a good mathematics student, you want to simplify this to try to see if you recognize this expression in any way. So we're going to distribute the p in to get a simplified expression. You notice this is a quadratic function because of the p squared. 
And remember the question we're trying to answer here is what is that optimal price P so that I get the most revenue? So what you wanna do is to look at this function, see where the maximum value of this function occur. And that would tell us exactly what the P value should be or how much you should price the t-shirt to get that maximum revenue. Well, if you had taken calculus, this would take you probably 10 seconds to solve. But suppose that we hadn't had calculus, we can visualize this by graphing. On the horizontal axis, it's your independent variable P price of the t-shirt in dollars. And on the vertical axis, you have your revenue, which is a function of P. If you do your due diligence and plot enough values, you'll see the graph of this function is a downward facing parabola. So that when the t-shirt is zero dollars, you make zero dollars in revenue. This is why your graph should intersect the origin. And the peak occurs at about $20 with the maximum revenue of $10,000. And if you priced it, the t-shirt too expensive, too high, $40 per t-shirt, then no one's gonna wanna buy it and then you make no money. So if I generalize this problem, this very simple business problem that you might confront in everyday situation, we have now gained the power to answer questions that are not easily answered by using specific numbers. So then doing math is not just about solving equations at the end. Doing math in the real world always start with making sense of the context, um, making some observations and generalize the problem to answer various questions related to the context. And so the more math skills you have, the more interesting questions you can answer. In the case of this problem, now you can be 100% sure that you should be charging the t-shirt at $20 in order to get the maximum revenue. I encourage you to find a question that you're interested in solving and try to generalize it. This is why it's so important to make sense of the mathematics instead of just following some procedures to compute something because, because the more math makes sense to you, the more power you have over problems in everyday life.